I have bred Mexican black king snakes for many years now and I'm going to tell you how to take care of a baby Mexican black king snake. The minimum size tank that you want is the length of your snake. Now babies hatch out around 10 inches or 25 centimeters so I'd recommend something that was like 12 inches long or 30 centimeters long. I made the mistake of putting them in too small of a tub when I first bred them the first year because that's what everyone recommended and what I found was they exhibited stress behaviors and would surf and just want to get out. Things got much better when I put them in a larger size enclosure. The Exoterra 30 30 by 30s would be a great start or 12 by 12 by 12 to you Americans would be a great start for a hatchling baby Mexican black king snake. Just be sure to close off the vents at the back that were there for wires to go through and seal it shut so that a king snake can't push that open and escape. Also, look for holes around the base of the doors on the outer edges. You can seal that up with a little blob of silicone. Now, you could go and use something like a 15 gallon over there in the US. I'll be honest, I don't have access to these. I don't know what they're like in terms of escapability. I just have looked at the dimensions and that's the sort of dimensions that I would find suitable for starting off with a baby. Now I consider lighting one of the most important attributes to getting care to a good standard. We want to have our lights come on for 12 hours and then 12 hours off. For example, if everything turns on at 8 a.m., then we have it all turn off at 8 p.m. Now, Mexican black king snakes can survive without UV, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't provide it. As baby snakes, they have a high calcium need, they're gonna be growing rapidly, and that added Vitamin D to make the most of the calcium they get in their diet is only going to help the healthy growth of your baby king snake in the long run. So 100% I would recommend giving baby snakes UV. Now my last clutch of Mexican black king snakes that I bred, I actually raised them from the start under UV and they absolutely thrived with it. I found that my babies would bask like crazy and make a big effort to get under those rays. So UV is a big one for baby king snakes, in my opinion. You just want a low level UV off to one side so they have that little patch of sunshine and that little patch of shade, just like nature, so they can go in and out of the sun if they want. Something like the Reptisun 5.0 would do quite well. So Mexican black king snakes actually like temperatures to be quite cool. I recommend their daytime ambient airtime temperatures be anywhere from sort of 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, and then give them a warm basking surface of around 26 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is in the ballpark of 78 to 82, around that sort of area. In the wild, they'll be able to go into holes, under logs, under branches, inside branches, this whole myriad of this complex environment for them to find areas that are insulated and cool or warm when the air is cooler. Their habitat in the wild is so much more complex, so let's give them a nice complex gradient in our enclosures. They might find a rock that the sun has warmed to press themselves against to warm up, or they might partially or fully sit out in the sunshine to warm up. So at a really basic level, you can give them a heat mat or an untank heater to give them that little belly heat on the underside, and that's fine. That gives them enough warmth to warm up and go about their day and digest. But a heat lamp will do the exact same for them, as well as loads of other health benefits. It does a lot of things to their cells, helps with healing, it's pleasurable to, to feel. There's so much more that a heat lamp will do for your baby Mexican black king snake compared to just an untank heater. So if you can make that choice, I would always choose a heat lamp over the undertank heater. Plus, if we provide decorations under that heat lamp, they can actually hide in amongst those decorations and press themselves against decorations that have been warmed by the lamp. So actually, if you provide the lamp, you can get that belly heat and that warmth from touch, as well as allowing them to bask like it's sunshine. So that method actually gives you both options, whereas the other undertank heater, you're only getting belly heat and that's it. So I would always go with a nice little heat lamp. Now, as long as the air temperatures are actually warm enough, like I mentioned previously, then a low wattage halogen is completely fine. And it has to sort of like 15 watts all the way up to sort of like 50 watts. It doesn't need to absolutely bake the king snake. Actually, king snakes don't want to get too hot. They just appreciate a little bit of that gentle warmth. So you don't need to go crazy as long as those air temperatures are correct. At night time, let everything turn off, like I said before, and allow those temperatures to drop. It's really good for their immune systems and it's really good for their health in the long run. And of course, you're not wasting electricity for no reason as well. It can go as low as 15 degrees Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit before you even need to worry about giving them any form of like supplemental nighttime heat. So for the most part, most of us will be absolutely fine just having it all off at night. Now, the dirt that we place at the bottom of our tanks is called substrate. 
Now, substrate is really good for them to express natural behaviors like digging and rooting around and basking cryptically amongst leaf litter and things like that. Substrate does two things for them. It allows them to dig and do the behaviors, like I said, and that allows them to reach a human microclimate. Have you ever lifted a rock when you're a kid and everywhere is dry, but once you lift that rock, the ground is actually quite moist still? That's because it's been encapsulated under that cover and it created a humid microclimate. So our kink snakes naturally in the wild would find little holes and burrows or rocks to be under to find those human microclimates. You can offer dry substrates like shavings, like lignocell, like aspen shavings, like pine shavings, things that allow them to do the behaviors of digging and making tunnels in the shavings. But if you're going to do that, I would make sure that you give them a dedicated humid hide of a little tub with a hole cut in it with some moist moss in there just for them to go in there and hydrate and use that. Then it doesn't matter about the depth and microclimate being in as part of the soil if you're just using two things to actually provide the two functions of substrate. So these baby Mexican black king snakes hatch out like little tiny shoelaces. So at this small size, they're very shy, very nervous. They are very aware that most things could eat them. So for that reason, they want to move around their enclosure, moving from cover to cover, being very cryptic and worried about their surroundings. They want to feel secure. So what we need to do is provide them with lots of options and lots of cover to make them feel secure. Make sure that entire back wall is covered so that you can't even see a portion of it. So they can move along that thermal gradient and move on in and out of areas that are heated by the heat lamp and off to cooler areas without you even seeing them. And that's how you get a really calm snake that's going to be more likely to eat very well because they feel so secure. Provide lots of sticks, logs, bits of cork bits of leaf litter, things that can get in, on, under, behind, just make their habitat really dynamic and complex. It provides those visual barriers to things seeing at them, so that makes them feel secure as well. Things they can get under and feel nice and tight and snug. A dynamic environment that offers lots of options, again, further adds to that feeling of security and that baby snake that feels very vulnerable at that size. Now you want to give them a water bowl that's big enough for them to obviously drink from, but curl up in and soak should they wish. Now at this size, that's relatively really easy. Most water bowls they'd be able to cram themselves into. So that's not really too much of a concern. And then like I said, that humid hide, give them that hide packed with moist moss to allow them to go in there and hydrate. That's really important at times like shedding. When they're shedding, the layers of skin are separating and there's fluid forming in between. This whole like intense physiological process is happening and they need to make maintain hydration now they'll get the hydration from drinking but obviously if you're breathing in an environment that's drier than your insides when you respire and breathe you're automatically losing hydration so by going down into a humid environment where the air humidity is higher than that it will limit the amount of hydration these baby snakes lose just by breathing so it's really important when they're going through these processes that they have that human microclimate they can retreat to should they wish. And you will find that even outside of the process of shedding that they will do that whenever they want anyway. In terms of diet, these things in the wild will eat a wide variety of prey items of different species, different taxonomic groups from mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles. But at this small size, it's very difficult for us to actually achieve that because the items that we have available to us in captivity at that small size are very limited. Often you're going to find that it's most likely going to be baby mice, which are called mice pinkies, because obviously they're hairless and they're pink. You can feed them a pinky every sort of five to seven days until you start moving up in prey size as the animal ages and grows. You want to be just big enough to the pinkies around the widest part of your Mexican black king snake baby's body, or just slightly smaller. You want them to eat it and then see a nice little bulge in their body. That's the sort of sweet spot you want to aim for in terms of the size of the pinky. And then maintain those standards as the animal grows, moving up from pinkies to hoppers to like fluffs, and then all the way up into small mouse, medium mouse, and as they grow, Grow, that ratio to the widest part of their body you can take that up with them now these have got quite a high metabolism compared to like boids and pythons so these animals will normally digest a meal in sort of like 48 to 72 hours and they're done so then if you're feeding them every five to seven days you're allowing them to have that break in between of not constantly being a state of digestion 
And then as the animal gets bigger, then you can start adding in bit different prey items when the size allows and really balancing out and diversifying that diet. But for now, as a baby snake, you'll do fine just sticking with the pinkies. I won't go over promotion in babies. That's more of an adult thing. So if you want to look into that as your animal grows, go check out the adult Mexican Black King Snake Care Guide on this channel. I'll be making so many more King Snake videos on this channel. So if you like that, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.